All right, well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you all found some coffee, tea, caffeine. Um, so uh, Brian and I are going to talk a little bit about, uh, we're going to dive a little bit more into some of the PTM and TGPIO pieces that are available for your use and how they're being enabled. So uh, next slide. Yep. So um, I know that, the, you know, kind of given the crowd and what we already talked about and even what I talked about previously, um, you know, there is a fair amount of awareness of what P2P and, and, and PTM are, but we'll just go a quick overview so that way people are all on the same page. Um, and, you know, as we've already heard today, uh, precisely synchronized time is really important to a large number of applications. You know, we've seen distributed databases, we've talked about manufacturing, we've even talked about the, uh, the cars themselves. Um, and some of these require synchronization to things like a time authority, and some just require to have a shared common sense of time. Um, no matter how or what kind of time they need, you know, the common thread here is that the, the software is typically what needs to consume the time and you know, the software needs to use it to schedule, to multiplex, or to be able to you know, kind of place things on a unambiguous order. Um, but there and also kind of lies the problem of you know, the, that the fact that the software needs the time. Um, so 1588 achieves excellent accuracy in the fact that it's using the ethernet, it's using the ethernet uh, packets, it's using the ethernet uh, hardware and the hardware clock, but transferring the time from the ethernet hardware to the running CPU um, is often fraught with inaccuracies and can actually induce, you know, up, you know, orders of magnitude of error compared to what, you know, state of the art P2P or other synchronization protocols are actually able to do. Um, so, yep, you can hit the next one. Yep, so they were talking a little bit 1588. Um, now, in terms of, you know, 1588 and then in terms of getting the data to the actual application, you know, that's where we talked a little bit about uh, PTM comes into play and helps us to solve this problem of the last few centimeters and getting it into the actual uh, CPU and actual server to be used by the application itself. And uh, just in case people aren't aware, PTM is, or precision time measurement, is part of the PCIe standard. It's an optional piece of it, um, but it is, you know, included in the most recent uh, client and Xeon processors as well as many Ethernet adapters. And, you know, PCI PTM is the hardware protocol. It runs in band over the PCIe, and it simultaneously captures the snapshots of the uh, PTP time and the system time, kind of as we talked about previously. Um, and so instead of having to read through software, you know, potentially going through an MMIO read or being able, and being able or being prone to inaccuracies that are done by the jitter of the OS, the software and the traffic congestion, you know, it's, it's a hardware process. Um, and so then, you know, given that the PTM uh, provides you a cross timestamp, you can use this to do a simple subtraction to understand the difference between the CPU time and the time on the NIC. And this allows you then to discipline the time that all the CPU applications are able to access through your posits calls, such as clock get time. Um, so you might ask, you know, what type of accuracy do you expect to uh, be able to see? And so on this slide, you can see uh, four different scenarios. The first two are ones without PTM, and then their second two are PTM, both idle and loaded. Um, as you might expect from what we were just covering, the red line there is uh, kind of your system uh, time without PTM. And on an idle system, you have around 500 nanoseconds of air. Um, obviously, as you have system load and you have your various um, inaccuracies induced by your OS and your fabric, you can have you know, hundreds, thousands of nanoseconds of air. Um, and then if you can see the uh, two scenarios of PTM, both idle and loaded, they're right around the zero axis. Um, you can see here that you know, PTA, PTM is able to achieve you know, errors similar to that of the state-of-the-art P2P distribution. 
Um, and you know, so once you have the system is able to bring time into the NIC, you bring time into your system, how do you use it? Well, you actually just use you know, your standard uh, POSIX uh, clock get time calls, you know, here clock real time. Uh, the great piece of this is the fact that once you have a system that is enabled with PTM, you as an application programmer are able to actually, you know, quote unquote, get this uh, precision for free in the fact that as long as you're using a new enough Linux kernel and something like uh, a new enough version of P2P for all and PHC to sys, then you're able to actually get this uh, in your application. Um, the final piece that you, you know, we kind of covered a little bit, but you might ask is, okay, so now that I have PTM, I have my system up and running, how do I ensure that uh, my time is accurate? How do I know the ground truth of what is actually occurring here? Um, and so that's what we actually used uh, TGPIO for. Um, and so using, using TGPIO, we're able to actually tra have a pulse per second put out from the uh, server itself based on the system clock, as well as a pulse per second from the actual NIC, and we're able to compare those using an oscilloscope or some other logic analyzer. And so this allows us to ensure that um, what we think is going on really is going on, and that our time is you know, synchronized to within tens of nanoseconds of accuracy to our reference clock. Let me make one quick change. Try to prevent some things from other things from popping up. Okay. So hello everyone. I'm I'm Brian and I work with AMI. And as you know, AMI is a firmware company. So how did AMI get involved in this? So we started. It started when we got connected with a mod and ACP tap, OCP tap, sorry, as an objective to for an objective to jointly raise awareness for PTM and TGPIO, uh, specifically with TGPIO. As you may already know, TGPIO is an Intel-specific uh, silicon feature for verifying uh, PTM. So some of the challenges that were being faced with uh, some challenges being faced with PTM awareness is things like data centers using various vendors for their systems. They're procuring systems from various vendors, and we, there is a need to have a common feature that's uh, that's available across all systems and vendors, all vendor systems. The other issue is that the TGPIO feature is supported, although supported by current Intel Silicon, is not commonly enabled, it's not commonly used, and it's not commonly understood by the industry at large. So OCP tap realized the value of PTM. They reached out and worked with AMI, and we were able to try to start trying to ensure firmware support is readily available for PTM, at least in our product starting off. And so one of the things that we did was when they reached out to us, we sent out various BIOS images for some Intel nooks, and that way Ahmad and his partners could actually demo PTM across a few uh, off-the-shelf parts, of off-the-shelf networks, or sorry, not networks, off-the-shelf systems. All right, another part of this for us was that what AMI said that we'll upstream the support for PTM and TGPIO enablement into our community edition of our Aptio product, so our boot firmware. So the path to enable users is basically requires multiple, multiple partners. Our first partner would be the silicon vendors. We need silicon vendors to enable a fe the features, uh, PTM and TGPIO, in the hardware itself. Our next level, it would be our firmware vendors, such as AMI. We need our firmware vendors to expose those options to those options for PTM and TGPIO enablement. So, because if you can't enable it, then what's the point for you? The next thing we need is for our manufacturers. Our manufacturers need to actually expose those TGPIO pins and the firmware settings. One of the things that we found out was that even if we did enable TGPIO in the BIOS, even if those settings and the UI switches were available for you to enable and disable, you didn't have the pins accessible to you. And so that's one of the things that we need our OEMs to work on for us. The next step would be our end users. Our end users need to know about TGPIO, that way they can go in, enable it, they can go start connecting their devices and using it and start applying PTM and TGPIO to their various applications. So what we know here is that PTM and TGPIO, they've been available for a while. Intel's been supporting this for at least since 2020. And AMI, we're committed to the open source community, and we want to make sure that we provide support for things such as the latest Intel Eagle Stream, which, we, which 
Intel is working on FSPs for binaries for us, and as soon as they're available, we'll be ready to upgrade, update our repo with that support. One of the things that will be in that new support for Aptio Community Edition will include enabling PTM and uh, enablement switches, essentially, for PTM and TGPIO. So that's what the goals are. Right now, as you see to the right of the screen, you can see that we already have started on our side, and so you can enable TGPIO, and we already have it enabled for, well, we already have it supported for enabling TGPIO. It's just not ready to go live on, uh, on our GitHub repo. But as soon as it is, you'll be able to find Aptio Community Edition at this address. So in summary, we have four things we need, want to leave with you. That time is distributed with precision around the globe today via things like NTP protocols, PTP protocols. But, and number two, PTM is here to address the time uncertainty in that last two centimeters, as he talked about earlier, to the CPU or the application layers. Uh, next, you have TGPIO, which is here to enable that ground truth verification and time synchronization accuracy. And D, or four, we want to let you know that silicon firmware and software support for PTM TGPIO is available today in some form. So our call to action, we've kind of separated it up into three different categories. For our OEMs and ODMs, we need deployment of PTM and TGPIO with firmware enablement and exposed TGPIO pins. For our vendors, we need to support PTM on relevant devices, especially PCIe switches. And for our end users, we need you to use PTM and TGPIO on, supply to, on supported platforms. And if your platform doesn't have support, we need you to go out and request that support for your platforms and your PCIe devices. And that's all I have. So thank you. Any questions? I guess I will start with a question. All right. So uh, can you explain what is that community edition? Oh, Aptio Community Edition. That's our open source uh, version of Aptio, which is boot firmware. Uh, right now we have support for several, uh, I know we have support for several Intel uh, platforms right now, and we have, and if you go to it, you'll see all the packages and things that we support. So it's our open source edition of our boot firmware. So let's say if I have a motherboard off the shelf, mm -hmm. would, uh, what are the steps to get basically this uh, community? I mean, is it possible to get the community edition on it, or this is for if I develop my own motherboard? Like, I believe this is more towards the idea of developing your own motherboards if you're on that side. But yes, you should be able to get support for it eventually. That's a it. very exclusive community. So. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. All right, so Nobu. Hi. Uh, my colleague Satoshi is eager to try this uh, PTM and DGPIO, and he's asking me what he needs to purchase. And so do you have the combination of a well, list of things that he needs to get so that he can try immediately? Okay, so from the firmware side, you need your, you need, from the firmware side, which is what I'm on, you need to make sure your BIOS supports it and your hardware supports it. So like we were talking about PTM, so it's going to be Intel. It's going to be have to be something later, I think around Tiger Lake or later. So it has to be something fairly recent. Uh, then you just have to go in and, and hopefully those, those uh, setup questions are available to you. That way you can enable it. And then for the hardware side, I mean, a variety of our hardware supports it. I mean, the, the best option is, um, you know, please feel free to contact us and we can definitely help with some of that. I mean, because um, as you mentioned, you know, multiple of our platforms support PTM as well as, um, you know, mul various SKUs support the TGPIO. So we'd want to make sure you find the right SKU. So, you know, please, please just reach out by email. Maybe I can have a follow up question. Going back to what I was, again, hoping when I reached out to you guys, to have this uh, ubiquitous like, uh, deployment on all the Aptio BIOSes, like, how far are we from that? Or is that even realistic? Or like, what, 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 what do we need to do? Like, what is the, uh, how can we, uh, let's say, bridge this gap of having, if your hardware, if your CPU supports PTM, the BIOS should not be on the way. Like, what do we need to do that? Oh. Well, I think what you will have to do is that, well, first thing is uh, the firmware right now, AMI, we're trying to do our part. We're doing our part as best we can inside of our Aptio products and our boot firmware products to make sure that that, that uh, 
that support is already there and available to you. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the only thing is that after it goes to a certain point, so our OEMs and ODM partners, then they get them, they get another decision if they want to expose that to us. And so for you as an end user, you have to make sure that you reach out to those OEMs and ODMs, those people right. that you're purchasing from, to ensure that they are giving you the support that you require. So now basically, uh, like to conclude, the ball is basically in, in the OEM's field, right? Hmm? It's, I want to say that this is it's a community. We're it's in a community. We're all it's a community for all of us. Abundantly clear. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, Stephen Mignot. I'm with American Megatrends too. So uh, I've worked with AMI to help get this whole ball rolling, and AMI sees the importance of it. And as a leader in uh, in in firmware. Uh, not just BIOS, but uh, security and, and BMC, we felt it was important to uh, start to raise awareness for this. So there's the plan that these guys have, uh, have laid out, but AMI's contribution isn't only to the community edition, which is an open source version of UE UEFI. We also made it a default feature in our Aptio core, which is licensed to every major ODM and most major OEMs out there and uh, many of the hyperscale data center companies. So uh, we've carried that as far as we can other than awareness. The other elements that um, our gentleman from Intel was uh, mentioning and, and Brian as well is what has to happen on the hardware to expose TGPIO pins. So, um, so this is what we're trying to do. There's going to have to be the pull. Um, we're going to see um, uh, a, a variety of different use cases, which Ahmad has spoken about at various events around the world, um, and we're already seeing demand for that. So when we see um, the consumers of the hardware, whether it's ODM white boxes or OEM platforms, uh, demanding this to be enabled, which is actually a pretty light lift on there. There's a few traces, a few pin headers. It's not a big lift for them to do this. Then it can start taking shape and get to the next level. This gentleman has a lot of plans of how we can leverage the synchronization of clocks and time. And it's going to touch a lot of different areas in our future economy. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so uh, one more thing, I, I, I want to also uh, address uh, what you asked, let's say, if you want to have something off the shelf. Very good news, and we were already here, but unfortunately the ex Expo closed earlier than this is going to finish. Uh, ASRock uh, Rack, they will be the first motherboard that is going to probably, before end of the year, they will basically ship it will be the motherboard that will have TGPIO available on like as on two test points. Not that, no, actually not only test points. They're, they're basically a U.FL footprint. And I mean, if we cheer enough for them they, and make them happy, they can perhaps also put the U.FL connector there and you literally will have what you're looking for. And AMI actually work with them and the BIOS part is enabled. And I have some other ones, but again, uh, if you don't get it 100%, you're not done. So I have some other ones that are like 99 point whatever, if you want to put it in scale, but it's not 100%. Once I have them there, they'll get announced as well. Okay, thank you.